Welcome to Recap King. In this video, we will explain Rock Sugar. This movie tells the story of a 12-year-old girl who continues to be tormented by the bully. However, one night, when she fights back hard and knocks her bully to the ground, the bully falls, hits her head, and stops moving completely. She is suddenly in crisis mode, when she must now hide the body, or face the consequences of her action. What will she do at this crucial moment in her life? Let's find out in Rock Sugar. Rock Sugar tells the story of a 12-year-old girl named Charlotte. Charlotte did not have good academic skills, so the girl often got bad grades. Because of this, Charlotte is often the target of bullying by her classmates. One day, Charlotte is bullied again by her classmates because her test scores are so bad. The bullying was led by a student named Brenda, who took Charlotte's exam paper and showed her bad grades to all her friends. Seeing Charlotte being bullied by her other friends, a geeky student named Daniel tries to help Charlotte. But Daniel is unable to help Charlotte because he is also the target of bullying by his friends. Charlotte tried to retrieve her exam papers which Brenda had stolen, and she fell to the ground. Seeing a few abrasions and bruises on Charlotte's body, Brenda finally threw the exam paper at Charlotte, then left the girl while throwing insults at Charlotte. Because of the commotion, Charlotte was summoned to appear before the principal with her parents. However, Charlotte instead becomes the one who is blamed and is considered the cause of commotion because the principal is more on the side of Brenda who is smart and excels in school. The principal instead scolds Charlotte and threatens to suspend her if something similar happens again. Not only from the principal, Charlotte also received a scolding from her mother. Charlotte could only look down silently and obey her parents' words to not cause any more trouble at school. Although at school Charlotte is often bullied as a stupid student, Charlotte always does her best to keep her school and home life separate. Charlotte never told her parents about the bullying she often experienced at school. When at home, Charlotte always tries to be a good and obedient child. Charlotte often helps with housework, such as taking care of the garden with her father. Charlotte has a younger sister named Issy, and she loves her very much. The next day, when Charlotte was in the toilet, Brenda again pranked her by taking a photo of Charlotte while the girl was urinating. Brenda then told Charlotte to get one of the students into trouble with the teacher, and if Charlotte didn't want to do it, Brenda threatened to share a photo of Charlotte urinating on social media. Charlotte was forced to obey Brenda's orders. Because she didn't want her embarrassing photo to spread to social media, Charlotte then tries to provoke Daniel's anger by mocking him and saying that Daniel is a loser. Hearing this, their friends also berated Daniel, so Daniel was angry and attacked one of the students who insulted him. Daniel and the students' fight was noticed by a teacher who rushed over to break them up. Charlotte did not waste the opportunity to record a video of the fight as evidence that she had managed to get a student into trouble to attract the teacher's attention and was then punished. Charlotte intends to give the tape to Brenda, but after seeing Daniel was badly injured because of her actions, Charlotte then felt guilty and gave up. When she comes home from school, Brenda urges Charlotte to give her the tape. Because Charlotte didn't want to give it, Brenda kept pushing her, so Charlotte had to push Brenda until she fell. After that, Charlotte rushed to run away. Brenda and her friends immediately chased Charlotte. However, Charlotte managed to avoid their pursuit by hiding behind a tree. While walking home, Charlotte kept thinking about what Brenda might do in return for her pushing Brenda. But Charlotte is a little relieved because the Christmas holidays will start tomorrow, and Charlotte doesn't have to go to school to face Brenda and the girls' bullying. In the afternoon, Charlotte was surprised by the arrival of her parents' old friends, a husband and wife couple named Mark and Janice who planned to spend the Christmas holidays with Charlotte and her family. As night falls, they throw a party at the house, where Charlotte's parents and their friends appear drunk from drinking too much. Towards midnight, Charlotte who could not sleep, then left the house carrying the rest of her parents' drinks. However, suddenly Brenda appears in her yard, and attacks Charlotte until she is injured. Charlotte did not remain silent. The girl tried to fight back and pushed Brenda to the ground. Unfortunately, Brenda's head hit a rock and knocked the girl unconscious. In a panic, Charlotte then took the wagon, hauled Charlotte's body and hid it in the warehouse, covering Brenda's body with a blanket. The next day, Charlotte kept an eye on the warehouse because Mark was always nearby. When Mark finally left, Charlotte immediately checked into the warehouse and was relieved to find that Brenda was still in there. In the afternoon, Charlotte's parents took Janice to go shopping for Christmas supplies, while Charlotte and Issy stayed home with Mark. While they were relaxing, Suddenly news of Brenda's disappearance was broadcast on television. Charlotte was feeling panicked again. But the girl tries to hide her panic by pretending to look for Brenda with the other residents, including Mark and Issy. 
While everyone is busy looking for Brenda, Charlotte then rushes back to the house, then digs the ground in her yard, intending to bury Brenda so that her actions are not found out. Meanwhile, on the way home, Charlotte's parents and Janice looked surprised because the residents were gathering. Mark then told about a girl named Brenda who was rumored to have been missing since last night, so the residents flocked to look for Brenda's whereabouts. Seeing Charlotte who wasn't anywhere, her parents immediately panicked and looked for the girl's whereabouts. Arriving at the house, Charlotte was still digging the ground with a frustrated face. Her father tries to stop Charlotte by snatching the shovel from Charlotte's hands, while her mother tells Charlotte to return to her room. Charlotte's parents seemed confused by Charlotte's attitude who always kept quiet and never said anything to them, even though they had forced her. Not long after, after confirming that her parents were in the room, as well as the others, Charlotte then returned to Brenda and found that Brenda was no longer there. Charlotte panicked, then took her bicycle and rushed to find Brenda's whereabouts. It turned out that Brenda had just fainted and had regained consciousness. Charlotte was a little relieved to know that Brenda was okay and was now walking home staggering from her injuries. From a distance, Charlotte saw Brenda who met Mark. Apparently the man wasn't at Charlotte's house. Instead of helping Brenda, Mark grabbed Brenda's mouth and took her to a quiet place. It turns out that Mark intends to rape Brenda. When Mark lowers Brenda's pants, Charlotte appears and then knocks Mark unconscious, saving Brenda. Charlotte then took Brenda who was still in shock and limped to the hospital and left her there. After making sure Brenda was safe and getting treatment, Charlotte finally returned home feeling relieved. Arriving at home, Charlotte was even scolded by her parents because the girl suddenly disappeared and made her parents worried while looking for her whereabouts because they didn't want Charlotte to have the same fate as Brenda who suddenly disappeared. Because she kept getting scolded, Charlotte then got up the courage to tell her father about the real incident that happened to Brenda, and also about Mark trying to rape Brenda. Hearing this, Charlotte's father was furious and then beat Mark. Knowing that her husband tried to rape an underage girl, Janice immediately felt shocked and very disappointed and then decided to divorce Mark. Long story short, a few days after the incident, Charlotte was seen going home alone after practicing karate because her father didn't have time to pick her up. That afternoon, there was no one in the house but Charlotte. Knowing this, Mark barged into Charlotte's house, intending to take revenge, because after Charlotte revealed his actions to everyone, his life is now falling apart. Charlotte tries to run away when Mark chases and is about to rape Charlotte. Mark cornered Charlotte into her room. Luckily, Charlotte's mother came just in time. She hit Mark's head and saved her daughter. Her mother then hugged her tightly, looking like she was crying but feeling so relieved that Charlotte wasn't hurt. Not long after, Charlotte met Brenda who had recovered from her injuries. Brenda still looks shocked and traumatized by what has happened to her. Brenda finally realized her mistake all along with Charlotte and apologized to her. Brenda also thanks Charlotte for saving her from Mark and says that from now on, she wants to be friends with Charlotte and will never bully her again. Hearing this, Charlotte was both relieved and happy and welcomed Brenda's wish to be friends with Joy. The film ends. Through this film, we are shown about the rampant bullying that occurs in schools. Sometimes, we as teachers or parents are too ignorant of our children and create gaps that make them reluctant to reveal the problems they are experiencing, either at school or in the surrounding environment. Therefore, start to care more and care for our children, because sometimes, what they need is not abundant wealth, but love and attention, so that our children will also become people who care more and respect others and not become a bully.